taking a bite out of Apple over its tax practices this week. Senator Carl Levin says he's not done. Our chief Washington correspondent Peter Cook sat down for an exclusive interview with Levin for this Sunday's Capital Gains. And Peter, I, as I understand it, there's no debate about whether Apple did anything illegal. This was all legal, right? The question is whether or not it was in the spirit of the law. Well, that's right. Levin doesn't reach any specific conclusions on whether or not uh, Apple violated the law, but nobody suggested during the course of the hearing this week that they did. But he says, as a legislator, that's for others to decide. But clearly, after his 18-month investigation, he believes Apple is not meeting the spirit of the law by parking so much profit overseas. Take a listen. In this case, the facts are pretty stunning, which is that Apple is able to shift about $70 billion in profits by uh, working out an agreement with it, itself, uh, with three uh, Irish uh, companies, which is now a tax haven, um, the way it's operating. And uh, those are wholly owned, controlled companies uh, by Apple. And that those companies, which didn't do anything in terms of creating the intellectual property, which are the crown jewels of Apple, nonetheless end up with uh, the majority of the worldwide profits of Apple. And that means it's free of U.S. tax until it's uh, repatriated. Are, are they we, any different, sir, than any other multinational company? Do you think Apple's doing something differently than, than those other firms? Unhappily, uh, I think many of or maybe most of our multinationals uh, are doing the same thing. Uh, there was a study in the Wall Street Journal in March that said there showed that uh, I think 60 of our multinationals uh, had stashed 100, <coughs> excuse me, 160 billion dollars uh, offshore, and that represented about 40 percent of the profits of these multinationals. Now, <coughs> if the profits are truly earned overseas, then you got a problem of when should they be taxed. But when it's just a shift with the stroke of a pen of intellectual property to yourself, to a tax haven, and when that intellectual property wasn't created in that tax haven, it was created right here with the support, by the way, of American taxpayer dollars, then you have a real problem of a loophole that needs to be closed. And as, of course, we heard on Tuesday, Tim Cook, the other Apple executives, challenging Levin's take on uh, Apple's tax practices, saying, first of all, Apple pays all the taxes it owes, doesn't rely on tax gimmicks, and further, that, uh, uh, that it meets the spirit of the law. And uh, they got some support, Emily, as you recall, during the hearing, Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky suggesting the subcommittee owed Apple an apology for even dragging them in front of uh, the committee in Washington. Right. So, Peter, now that uh, Apple ha has testified, Tim Cook has testified, where does this go from here? What, what's the next move uh, for Senator Levin? Well, I asked Levin, are you, are you done here? Is this it? And he says no. He really wants to push bipartisan legislation to close these loopholes. He thinks this should happen before broader tax reform. Close these loopholes, use that revenue potentially to turn off sequestration. He believes there's bipartisan support for that, at least in the U.S. Senate. And uh, Emily, if he were to pursue that, that would be a, a, obviously a very big thing for companies like Apple, anyone who operates overseas. And it would be a big thing for the larger effort towards corporate tax reform. It may blow that effort up. So Tim Cook may not be getting his single-digit tax rate to bring money back to the U.S., right? Is that what you're saying? Not anytime soon, based on where things stand in Washington.